Hey everyone, I'm Emily Hazelwood and I'm Amber Sparks and we're here with the Blue Latitudes Foundation to be interviewing and going out on the water with Sister Island Oysters. We can't wait to go check out their amazing aqua farm, maybe get a look at some of the baby oysters and have a great day out on the water. So let's go. I'm Anna Parker. And I'm Dana Wilford, uh, and we're at the Muir Point Boat Launch in Brunswick, Maine. Um, Sister Island Oysters is actually in Freeport, but it's just about a half a mile south of here, so this is where we leave. Sister Island Oysters is our very small scale oyster farm um, that we started now two years ago. Simple question, what yeah. does it take to grow an oyster? Sunlight. Water. Sunlight and water. <laughs> That's it? Uh, ocean water. Yeah. yeah. And they grow without any, like we don't have to touch them at all. So we are looking at our floating oyster bags, which look like this when they're not in the water. So, um, what we're Anna, what are we looking at? Some of the bags are fuller, like this one is definitely fuller than we would like it to be. Uh, we can tell because it's sinking a little bit, so it means it's, the oysters have grown quite a bit and it means they're heavy and they're weighing the bag down. So in the perfect world, when we come out here, some of the maintenance is to actually separate, like take one of the oyster bags that has oysters in it when they've grown and separate them into two bags. That way they'll weigh less and um, be able to grow better. And another thing we want to do when we're out here is, is flip them over. Um, as they grow, the part that's underneath, is, it gets a lot of fouling on it. So like algae, and you can see it here. And other things that are floating through the water, as you can see here perfectly, will stick to the bag and grow. And, um, and the more of this that is on the bag, the less water flow we have. Um, so it's important to come out here occasionally to flip them over so the sun then can kind of crisp these up and then we can after it's been out for even just 24 hours, um, wipe it off quite easily. In November, so come like almost next month, we will, um, it's a big day, but we'll like combine all of the bags and pack these bags as full as possible and take the floats off so that they're just a bag. Um, and we have what's called a cage and we sink that to the bottom and they, they stay there dormant from November until that April. We want to make sure that they land at the, in the right orientation when they get on the bottom. And we actually have mud on the bottom here. Um, so if they land crooked or sideways, the mud will actually suffocate a lot of the oysters. We'll put all of the bags in the cage, like dresser drawers, drop it over the side of the boat, and then um, and then Anna and I will scuba dive down and make sure that everything like looks good and is, is set up properly for the next six months. Okay. Some of the oysters. Oh. Aren't those awesome? Wow. So this was just a seed. Like, was this three months ago? Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is huge. Yeah, I mean, months. three months ago, that was about the size of our pinky nail. A lot of them have these like cool patterns on the back of them. Sometimes we get like purple oysters, sometimes we get striped oysters, sometimes we get black and white ones like this, the Cruella de Vils. How many years before you can harvest them and take it to market? Um, I would say, oh, that's funny. Um, I would say, anywhere between one and four, like depending on people's preference. They taste and they look totally different depending on where they were grown and kind of at what de what water depth they're grown in. Oh. It's wild. Wow. Yeah. What is it about the oysters that really got you jazzed? You, you know, there's a huge market for oysters. I think they expect the market to continue to grow. Um, they are really self-sufficient. You put them in and they do their thing. And I hope in the next few years we're, we're gonna be selling um, to the local market and restaurants. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Science CTV. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can see more videos like this on our channel. And make sure to follow the Blue Latitudes Foundation on all your favorite social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and we hope to see you there. Thanks so much, explorers. Catch you next time. Bye.